Hi, my name is Annette Evans, and I am the voice behind On Her Own, where we explore what it means to survive and thrive as women, people who can't always count on having health to navigate the world. My background is in shooting and combatives, which means I've thought a lot about what it takes to solve violent problems with everything from walking and talking my way out of danger to using weapons and bare hands to force my way to safety. Beyond just feeling safe, I want to be safe, and I want to help you be safe too. One of the ways I'm doing that is through this series, where I take a hard look at the products and techniques that are marketed to women to see if they're actually an effective way to help us be safer, or if they just exist as a way to take our money and make us feel like we've done something. In my last episode, Carl and I asked for viewer suggestions on things to look at. And this was one of the overwhelming, I don't want to say favorites, but it was mentioned an awful lot. You may have heard or even given this advice to spike your keys between the fingers of your clenched fist so that you can fight off an attacker with the jagged edges of your keys. I can't count how many times I've heard this advice throughout my life, starting in my early teens or maybe even before. The idea is that everyone carries keys with them and that by holding them like this, they work as a sort of force multiplier so that any punch you make will create extra pain and damage when it connects with your attacker. After all, all those jagged edges are sharp and scratchy and keys are made out of metal so it sounds like they'd be a great improvised weapon. It's also based on the idea of classic brass knuckles, which look like this. You put your fingers in the holes and wrap them around into a fist, and then you have a heavy, hard surface over your knuckles when you punch someone. Some brass knuckles have spiky things coming out of them, and that's probably where the idea of spiking keys between your fingers and making a fist comes from. So how well does this tip work? In my conversations with several experts, they expressed doubts that it could even be safely demonstrated, let alone be used and be effective in a real attack. That was a huge red flag for me, but I wanted to try it anyway. Finally, Chuck Haggard of Agile Training and Consulting a 30 plus year law enforcement officer and one of my mentors suggested that there might be one way we could try it out. We met up at the Range Master Tactical Conference in March and this is what we did. So Chuck here has a couple of keys in his hands. You wanna show him what's there? And we have it set up kind of like we normally have, uh, we tell women to put their keys between their fingers. And we have underneath there what you see is a block of clear ballistics gel, which is something that can be used to show how bullets work. So it's a an analog to human tissue and Chuck is going to punch that gel block now with those keys and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna start light because you can injure your hand doing this. And I'm not real comfortable hitting much harder than that. There's no support for the keys. And then what they want to do is rotate around. And if you catch the serrated part or the little teeth there, you can split open the web of your hand and uh, injure your hand. And then there's no support in your palm backing these things up. So they get shoved back into your hand pretty hard when you do that. That sounds terrible and I don't see any damage to the uh, block. I'll get some still photos later and uh, we'll see what happens there but there's no real damage there. We haven't even put you know clothing in the way. We haven't put anything else in the way and um, Chuck's just punching it progressively harder and harder and uh, see a shake his hand there. It's there's, not. It's, it's, un it's very uncomfortable to do that um, and I'm, I'm not going to hit any harder than that just because I don't want to like like if I catch it wrong and I split the web of my hand open, I'm gonna have to deal with that the rest of the day. Which sounds terrible. Here's a close up of the ballistics gel block when we were done with it. You can just barely see that there are some scrapes in it, which was all of the damage that we could manage. You might wonder if the jello-like texture of the block made the keys bounce off of it differently from skin, 
but it's made to help replicate the human body, including how the skin resists punctures. There was simply no true penetration of the gel with the keys. More importantly, you saw Chuck talk about how painful and dangerous punching just that block was when he had the keys in his fist. That's why we didn't try with anything more solid. You also heard Chuck say a few things there about why this trick doesn't work, but let's recap and expand on that a little bit. A ring full of keys doesn't have any support for the keys so that they stay where you want them to in your fist. As the keys hit something solid, like the person you're trying to punch, they get shoved back between your fingers and back into your palm. Rather than cause injury to your attacker, you're much more likely to hurt yourself as those thin metal pieces drive into your hands. If the pointy ends of the keys get caught in anything, or even if they don't and they just start moving around because of that lack of support, they can cut your fingers and split the webbing between your fingers. I bet most of you have gotten paper cuts like that before and know how annoying and even painful they are. So imagine that, but much worse. That's why brass knuckles like these have a rounded part that your fingers and fists wrap around and support the part that you hit the other person with. It makes the strike stronger, but more importantly, it prevents you from hurting yourself by having the weapon driven into your fingers and breaking them. The rounded edges are important too, to prevent you from cutting or scraping yourself. That's not the only problem with using your keys as a self-defense tool. Another is that as a force multiplier for a direct strike, you still need to hit someone. Powerful punches require some level of training, practice, and yes, strength. They aren't always easy to do well, and it can be hard to hit what you're trying to hit. Even if keys can cause a lot of extra damage with a punch, you still need to get that punch there, and that's a tough thing to rely on if you don't know how to fight. If you do know how to fight, the keys won't help you. The other downside to this tip is that by definition, you can't hit somebody without being close to them. While you can't always avoid an attacker getting too close to you, it's certainly something that you should avoid as much as you can. If the only way you could dissuade a bad guy requires hands-on contact, you probably need more and better skills and tools in your arsenal. I know some of you will argue that this is intended as sort of a last-ditch strategy, but we all know that this is the kind of advice that is rarely given in the context of other suggestions and the downsides, and there are many, are rarely mentioned. Even if you do manage to hit them and you do manage to injure them, you have all of those lovely bloodborne pathogens all over you. I don't know about you, but I don't think I want to voluntarily expose myself to the bodily fluids and germs of the kinds of people who might want to attack me, especially through the use of a tool that probably won't even make them think twice about continuing to hurt me. All that, and if you manage to lose your keys in the scuffle, then you don't have your keys and you can't get into your car, you can't get into your home, and your attacker might be able to if those keys aren't immediately found. It's true that the idea of a fisting a set of keys is descended, is descended from brass knuckles, which don't come with a lot of these problems. However, brass knuckles still require you to know a little bit about how to punch, and they still require that up close and personal interaction. And more importantly for many of you, they're illegal in many areas of the country. I'm not endorsing them here. I'm just showing them to you so you understand where the idea of using your keys and your fist comes from and some of the things to look for as you evaluate other similar tools that might be suggested to you. Anyway, final verdict on keys and your fist. You all wondered how stun guns got three on her own birds. And well, this tip is one of them. I'm awarding it one on her own bird because not only will it not injure or dissuade your attacker, it's likely to hurt the defender. Throw this idea out before you or someone you love gets hurt by it.